nzakira We have every reason to believe that acts of genocide have occurred. How many acts of genocide does it take to make genocide? Um, Alan, that's just not a question that I'm in a position to answer. It's true that, the, that you have specific guidance not to use the word genocide in isolation, but always to preface it with this, uh, with this word acts of? Um, I have guidance which, uh, which to which I, uh, which I try to use as best as I can. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I have, uh, there are, are formulations that we are using that we are trying to be consistent in our use of. Um, I don't have a, an, an absolute uh, categorical uh, prescription. It is ludicrous um, in retrospect um, that the discussion was about, well, how what might we be viewed if we declared that there is genocide and then we are not in a position or not ready or willing or able to do anything about it. The fact of the matter is it was there, and the fact that we didn't say so was already tarnishing our credibility and our and our capacity to do something about it. So. But I think, I mean, I, I, as I said, I think that's probably one of the most shameful passages in this, uh, in this whole uh, exercise was our, the length of time and the amount of tortured discussion it took us to, to actually come to that determination. The Rwandan genocide came to an end in July 1994. It had lasted 100 days and ended only when the Tutsi rebels won the civil war. Hutu extremists had killed over 800,000 people as the world stood by. When I'd lay down at night in the hallway there, there was a hope that Something's going to happen, you know? S something's got to happen. This thing didn't end in a couple of days like we thought it did. It didn't end in a week or two like we thought it would. Somebody's going to do something. <sighs> By the time the genocide was over, I was so angry. at America, America the beautiful, America the brave. I was angry with our government. I was angry with people who could do something, even the simplest things, and they didn't. As the years passed, World leaders, who did little as genocide happened on their watch, came to places like Niarabuye on pilgrimages of contrition. At what point did I start saying to myself, we should have done more? When did that start coming to me? Honestly, it didn't start happening probably until I went to Rwanda, uh, saw the bodies. It was worse than anything I had seen in Vietnam. Uh, and after that, uh, I began understanding, or at least asking myself, whether we, uh, whether we couldn't have done more. I, I think going to Rwanda was one of the biggest shocks for me. I went to, um, this this church uh, on um, lake and uh, um, then there was a mass grave and there was a small skeleton that they had managed to excavate which was about the size of my grandchild at that time and just and you could see the machete mark on the skull I wish that I had pushed for a large humanitarian intervention people would have thought I was crazy it would never have happened but I would have felt better about my own role in this. 
it was a very painful and traumatic uh, experience for me personally. And I think in some way for the, for the United Nations, it's not something that you, you forget. If we were to be confronted with a new Rwanda, is the world ready to do it? Would the world move in to stop it? And my answer is, I really don't know. I wish I can say yes. But I'm not convinced that we will see the kind of political will and the action required uh, to stop it. Eventually, President Clinton himself came to Rwanda. I have come today to pay the respects of my nation to all who suffered and all who perished in the Rwandan genocide. It may seem strange to you here, especially the many of you who lost members of your family, but all over the world there were people like me sitting in offices day after day after day who did not fully appreciate the depth and the speed with which you were being engulfed by this unimaginable terror. In his remarks, which were billed as an apology, Clinton did say the U.S. had made mistakes. But he never actually said he was sorry. He met with survivors and heard the human consequences of his policy of non-intervention. And then he left. Mr. President, the lack of intervention in Rwanda um, can you tell us why the U.S. didn't intervene? I think that the people that were bringing these decisions to me felt that the Congress was still reeling from what had happened in Somalia. And by the time they finally, you know, I sort of started focusing on this and seeing the news reports coming out of it, uh, it was too late to do anything about it. And I feel terrible about it, because I think we could have sent five, 10,000 troops here and saved a couple hundred thousand lives. I think we could have saved about half of them. Uh, but I, I will always regret that Rwandan thing. I will always feel terrible about it. I, I came back uh, with, and still live with uh, this enormous guilt you know, I became, uh, fell, started falling into these depressions and, and it's like a spiral. And so I'd find uh, scotch mostly and I'd just drink myself and drink and then I'd, you know, cut myself or try to jump off things because the, the pain of killing yourself is nothing compared to the pain of living with this. I was the commander, my mission failed and uh, hundreds of thousands of people died. And that I can't find any solace in statements like I did my best. A commander can't use that as a reference in any operation. He succeeds or he fails. And then he stands by and to be accused of and to be held accountable for. And my mission failed. And that's that. And I don't feel guilty. I never felt guilty. Dollar felt guilty all the time. And I think this is the reason why he's still deeply wounded while my scars are, are okay. And when we came back from Rwanda with my wife, we were deliber deliberately, we had no, no children. And it was so evident for her, for me, that after this experience, uh, yeah, we both wanted to create life. I mean, I had never explained to my son that he was a product of a genocide. It's not easy to explain. <laughs> I, 
it is. Nothing else, Greg. Right?